call on to Tyron and I'll let Tyron take it from here. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, my name is Kieran Coca. I'm an attorney with the Department of Procurement Services, and I'm here to talk to you today about workforce development incentive programs. Um, the city has a number of incentive programs. Not all of them have to do with workforce development, but I'm going to focus on the ones that touch on this topic today. So workforce development incentives and programs. The city has implemented numerous initiatives aimed to increase the number of skilled residents prepared to work in growing industries um, and ensuring that disadvantaged populations and youth have access to employment opportunities is also one of the city's top priorities. This workshop will cover the Chicago residency ordinance, local hiring requirements, as well as bid incentives related to workforce development. So we're going to talk um, start by talking about our residency requirements. Um, so it's important to the city that if we're spending city dollars, um, which ultimately come from taxpayer dollars, that we ensure that city residents are benefiting from projects. So the city council passed the residency ordinance, which is in municipal code section 2-92330. And this ordinance requires that contractors on construction contracts valued at $100,000 or more utilize Chicago residents on at least 50% of all labor hours. In addition, at least 7.5% of the total labor hours have to be performed by project area residents. And what I mean by project area is the actual area where the construction work will be performed. So when you get a bid package, they'll either have a physical map showing the boundaries of the project area or a written description of the street limits for the particular project area. One thing to keep in mind with these two requirements is that if a city resident also happens to be a project area resident, that counts towards both the 7.5% requirement as well as the 50% requirement. Um, contractors must submit residency records and payrolls throughout the contract terms so we can verify compliance and penalties for non-compliance. For the Municipal Code of Chicago, if you fail to meet these requirements, you are subject to liquidated damages. So it's important that you're aware of these requirements when bidding on a city funded construction contract. Next, we're going to talk about city based business incentives. So when I say incentive, I mean, these are opportunities to artificially reduce your bid price purely for evaluation purposes. So if you're eligible for an incentive, we will reduce your bid price by the applicable percentage when comparing it to other bids. But um, if awarded the contract, the contract value will be the value of your actual bid before the incentives were applied. The purpose of incentives is to encourage contractors to perform some type of behavior or refrain from performing um, some type of behavior. So the first one we're gonna discuss, um, as I said, was this, is the city-based business incentive. This is found in Municipal Code Section 2-92-412. And this bid incentive has three different categories, 4%, 6%, eight, and 8%. And I'm gonna provide a little breakdown of each. So at the 4% level, if you're a city-based business, meaning your main office is located in the city and the majority of your full-time staff is located in the city, then you're eligible for a 4% bid incentive. If in addition to that, at least 50% of your employees are city residents, then you're eligible for a 6% bid incentive. And then if you're, elig if you're um, eligible for the six and the majority of city residents live in socioeconomic disadvantaged areas of the city, then you can actually get an 8% bid incentive. So equal employment opportunity. This incentive is in municipal code section 2-92-390 and it applies to construction contracts that are over $100,000. Um, historically, minorities and women have not had as much opportunity to work on construction projects, and it's important for the city to see those numbers increase um, for city-funded work. Therefore, we have goals for all city-funded construction projects over $100,000 for certain percentages to be performed by minority and female journey workers, apprentices, and laborers. So the way this incentive works is when you're completing your bid, you're allowed to propose what commitments you're gonna to make to hire female and minority journey workers, apprentices, and laborers. 
The city has goals, but they're not requirements. So it's up to the contractor to propose what, the, their, what participation they're willing to commit to. There are um, caps for the amount of participation you can get for purposes of calculating the incentives, but there are no caps on what percentage of work can be actually performed by women and minorities in these categories. So the caps which bidders can propose are up to 15% for female workers and 70% for minority workers. For this incentive, there's actually a formula you have to complete, and in each part of the formula, you commit to a percentage of women and minority workers um, per each category. And then you complete a calculation to get what we call an award criteria figure, which is the basis for your bid evaluation. Um, contractors can receive 150% credit toward their commitment for each labor hour worked by employees from socioeconomically disadvantaged areas. And the ordinance um, also does provide for damages to be assessed if you do not meet your commitments. So it's important to keep that in mind as well. Apprentice dualization bid incentive. So the bid incentives that we've discussed so far involve applying at the time of bid, and then when we apply the incentives that you are eligible for to your, um, we apply the incentives that you're eligible for to your bid on that particular project. So for these next two incentives I'm gonna cover, you apply at the time of bid and earn your incentive through your performance on the contract, and then you get an earned credit certificate that you can use to be applied on a future bid. Um, so there are two incentives I'm going to talk about, and they're very similar in that they deal with the utilization of apprentices. Um, the first one is the City College's CPS Apprentice Utilization Incentive, where you can earn up to a 1% bid incentive to apply to future contracts. The apprentices must be sponsored into an apprenticeship training program that's authorized by a union to sponsor apprentices and either be enrolled or graduated from a construction technology training program administered by City Colleges, participating in a workforce development program funded by DFSS or graduated from a high school operated by, the, by Chicago Public Schools. Um, if a vendor meets those requirements and 5 to 10% of the labor hours on a contract are performed by eligible apprentices, then that vendor can earn up to a 0.5% incentive for future contracts. And if 11 to 15% of labor hours are performed by eligible apprentices, then a vendor can earn a 1% bid incentive. The city monitors this by requiring things like payrolls and proof um, of enrollment in the apprenticeship program so we can verify that apprentices are actually being hired and trained. If that contract closeout, the city verifies that you met your commitments, then we will give you an earned credit certificate that's valid for three years, and you can use that once towards your bid on a future contract. Um, now we're going to talk about the ex-offender apprentice utilization bid incentive. Just like the previous one, vendors can earn up to a 1% bid incentive. The incentive provides an opportunity for ex-offenders in our community um, with a path back into the workforce. Um, we work with delegate agencies to receive funding from DFSS to actually screen, recruit, and um, approve potential candidates. If prime contractors commit to utilizing apprentices who are in the apprenticeship program sponsored by the union, then at the end of the contract, if 5 to 10% of the total labor hours were performed by those apprentices, then a vendor can earn a 0.5% bid incentive. If 11 to 15% of the total labor hours were performed by apprentices, then a vendor can earn an incentive up to 1%. Again, this credit's earned throughout your performance during the contract, and we will monitor compliance and give you an earned credit certificate at the end of the contract. Um, just some resources for you, information, including regulations regarding all of DPS's incentives and programs, um, as well as the municipal, a link to the municipal code and our rules are located on our website at um, www.chicago.gov backslash DPS. Um, we do have a separate workshop that covers the rest of our incentives and programs. So if you're interested, and then I would encourage you to sign up for those programs. Um, you can do that again at our website that's listed on this slide. And I will now turn uh, the presentation over to our next speaker. Thank you, Karen. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pass the controls to China. And you should have them so you can share your screen.
All right. Hi, everybody. My name is China Hampton. I am the Director of Workforce Development here at Hire360. Um, just a little bit about Hire360. Hire360 is a unique nonprofit that's focused on um, assisting individuals with accessing and reducing barriers for individuals that are looking for careers in the construction industry. Um, so Hire360 was formed with a thought in mind that it will be $100 billion of private and public sector construction coming in the, ten, in, in the next 10 to 15 years. So we want to ensure that individuals are prepared to enter into this industry. Hi 360 was started in January of 2020. Um, of course, we all know that COVID happened in March. Um, since then, we have turned all of our workforce services virtual. Um, we've had over 1400 individuals that have attended our virtual orientations um, to just show you in this virtual world, we are still moving forward. Um, we also understand that we are not the only common door to the trades, which is why we've partnered with organizations like Chicago Women in Trades, Revolution Workshop, and HACIA to ensure multiple pathways for candidates looking for training and employment opportunities in the construction industry. In fact, these two organizations, Chicago Women in Trades and HACIA, are currently working on CTA's RPM project with us. We formed a unique partnership to get this done, a very unique partnership. Um, these are a list of our partners, um, which are um, folks from the development industry, philanthropy, contractors. Um, and again, we all want to address the same issue, which is reducing barriers for individuals that, that are looking for careers in the construction industry. This is our board of directors. Um, we have an industry focused board members that all have a common goal again to ensure a common front door to the construction trades. We want to ensure that we're demystifying the process for individuals that are looking for equitable and stable opportunities in the construction industry. So the Chicago Federation, Chicago Federation of Labor and United Way launched a small pilot program on a successful program in Milwaukee. Um, we wanted to ensure, they wanted to ensure that they connected the community to construction. Their secret, um, of course, with them launching this small pilot program is providing a common front door, not the only door, as I mentioned prior to, but a common front door to get individuals connected with trade apprenticeships and put to work with the contractor. So by providing this common front door, um, we get to scale and have a large pool of people to connect to the trade. As I mentioned before, uh, in a virtual world, we are still moving forward. Um, we're ensuring that clients and candidates are informed and educated about opportunities in the construction industry. Um, and more recently, manufacturing and, and hospitality industry that we've tapped into. Our model is to inform, educate, train, connect, and employ individuals. Our caseworkers, our caseworkers, I'm sorry. <laughs> our caseworkers host orientations to inform candidates of the work that Hire360 does. We review the industries that we are focused on and provide them with Q&A sessions to answer any questions that they may have. We assign each candidate that is interested in the construction industry a caseworker who follows up with candidates after their scheduled orientation date to provide them one on one conversations about taking the steps in their taking the next steps in their careers. Based upon our conversations with the candidates and an initial assessment we conduct, we determine the necessary training for these individuals to take for next steps. Now, upon completion of the training that we provide, we work with our industry reps to determine what roles are suitable for these candidates and work on placement. Our industry reps are connected with the trade unions, the general contractors and developers to ensure that we are up to date on the latest employment opportunities. We also have wraparound services that assist individuals that are looking for careers in the construction industry through our barrier reduction fund. Um, and our barrier reduction fund is used to assist candidates that have certain barriers that they need assistance with overcoming. So this can be transportation, child care, application fees, um, anything that is needed by the candidates. We want to ensure that we're providing a multiplicity of things um, to help them uh, have sustainable careers in the construction industry. Um, this is my contact information. Again, uh, my name is China Hampton. If you 
uh, know of someone that is interested in learning more about our program, please feel free to shoot me an email um, at champton and higher 360chicago.com. Um, like Jackie mentioned before, if you have questions, please shoot them in the chat box. Anything that I definitely can answer, I definitely will. But looking forward to working with um, any of the contractors on board, looking forward to working with the owners, and then looking forward to doing some intake for candidates that are interested in careers in the construction industry. And that, that's it for me, Jackie. All right, thank you, China. I am going to um, move to Jasmine. You have slides, Jasmine? Yes, I do. Okay, I will go ahead and hand off the control to you. Thank you. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jasmine Williams, and I'm the manager of construction initiatives at the Chicago Cook Workforce Partnership. The Chicago Cook Workforce Partnership operates the public workforce system in Chicago and suburban Cook County. We have over 72 locations providing services to over 140,000 people and 1,000 businesses each year through our WIOA programming and other local initiatives. Uh, most of our services target communities with high rates of poverty or individuals who have been historically underrepresented in the skilled trades. Um, we, our business service design, we have um, a business relations and economic development unit that works to build um, opportunities for community members to create job opportunities. We also have sector centers in information technology, retail and hospitality and healthcare. And I'll speak um, a little bit about some of our sector-based initiatives, like our construction works program and our partnership with the CTA. Um, I also will talk a little bit about some of the business tools that we have that can assist contractors with um, benefiting from um, resources that we have. So our construction initiatives, um, we've recently signed on with CTA to participate in their RPM modernization project. So the RPM stands for the red and purple line. Um, CTA is gonna be doing a lot of work over the next couple of years, and they have contracted us to assist them with ensuring that um, minorities and community members are able to take advantage of the opportunities that become available. Additionally, we are working with the Illinois Tollway with the Construction Works Program in a similar capacity. Um, the, the goal of that program is to increase the amount of minorities underrepresented groups in the skilled trades. Um, Moving forward, some of the services that people can access through these two initiatives are resume, res, resume refinement, interview preparation, um, as, China, as China mentioned, a number of supportive services to help with any barriers that people might have. So it could be union fees, tool or equipment purchase, um, or things like transportation. Um, we're able to assist with those. We also have a number of cohort trainings available. So we partner with a number of, we partner with a number of smaller and um, construction focused organizations to provide uh, pre apprenticeship training to better prepare candidates. We also assist with test preparation, apprenticeship sponsor letters, as well as um, employment placement, which is the ultimate goal. Um, I will share these web these websites again, but if you have any job seekers that are interested, they can um, head to this link um, tinyurl.com with construction works or tinyurl cta at ccwp and they are able to fill out an assessment and be contacted by someone from one of our workforce centers moving forward sorry having some technical difficulties So to speak a little bit about our business services, um, I wanna talk a little bit about on-the-job training, incumbent worker training, customized training, and work experience. So on-the-job training is a higher first program. These Now I'm really talking about resources for businesses. Before that was more participant facing. 
um, here if you are a contractor or a business and is looking to get connected um, on the job training. That's a higher first program. So we will reimburse you for up to 75 percent of the cost to train an individual. So you have someone who maybe meets some of your requirements, but are not um, fully fully skilled in what you need. We're able to come together with you as the employer, outline a training program for that individual and reimburse you for the cost of the wages during, during the training period um, for incumbent worker training. If you have existing um, people in your workforce, so existing employees that need to be reskilled or retrained, we're able to use um, some incumbent worker training funds to reimburse you the cost of upskilling that individual. That way you don't need to lay that person off and look for someone else. We want people who have jobs to retain those jobs and have the skills that they need to continue to do those jobs well. Um, we're also able to create some customized training opportunities. So we can work with you um, and create a situation where maybe you wanna um, have a training class or a training group. We can come together and provide some funds um, towards um, a customized training. And finally, the work experience program. Um, that is something that's specifically for young people. So we have some things carved out for 18 to 24 year olds where um, we basically pay the 18 to four year olds for 20 hours a week at the Chicago minimum wage. And during that time, they're able, it's almost like a paid internship. So um, they're able to come in, they're able to gain some skills, get some exposure to your industry. Um, so we are always looking for partners to partner with um, to develop training for the community. Um, if you are an employer and you are seeking a tradesperson, so you have people that you want to hire, we also are able to take those requests and assist you with meeting your staffing needs. So um, here is the link to the form, tinyurl.com backslash hire CW. So if you want to hire some construction workers, um, you fill out this form and you will be contacted by one of our business development representatives. Um, that's basically all I have, I wanted to make sure I went to this screen right here. It has my information on it, my email and phone number. Um, for business relations, you can call me, but the best person to call is Patricia Moore. Um, she's way, um, she's well versed in all of the tools that I just described for employers and for any job seekers out here um, to get connected to our CTA initiative or the Construction Works initiative. Um, you just um, go to that website, fill out the very short form, and we will reach out to you. And that is all I have. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, and I will ask that now if um, each one of the ladies, I know Karen, your uh, camera isn't working, but if the other ladies would be so kind and place their cameras on, we will start uh, the question and answer portion uh, of our presentation today, because um, there are some questions for you um, today. Uh, <clears throat> I think the first one is for Karen. Um, Give me just a second. It says under the existing reciprocity agreement, does the city accept on our Cook County MBE and WEBE certification, even if the county certified firm is not listed in the city's MBE WBE directory? Yes, so under our reciprocity program, we do honor um, certification and BE and WBE certification if the firm is certified by Cook County. Um, as to the directory question, I am not positive whether um, the, rep the firms that are certified through reciprocity are generally published in the city's directory. Um, I can definitely look into that and um, and get back to uh, Mr. Sawyer regarding that issue, um, if that's something that he would like more information on. Okay, thank you. Uh, are there any additional questions? Wow, you ladies did a, a wonderful, fantastic, <laughs> fabulous job. <laughs> we have them very quiet. 
Um, are there any additional questions? We'll give them just a few uh, seconds because some people may be typing and I know how it is when you're trying to type real quick. Um, and so I will say um, thank you to uh, my speakers for today. Karen Copa from the Department of Procurement Services. Uh, we also have China Hampton from Hire 360 and Jasmine Williams from uh, the Chicago Cook uh, Workforce Partnership. Um, you can always get great information um, on our social media, Facebook, uh, Twitter, YouTube, and we just launched our LinkedIn. So any of these social media handles, you can get information. So follow us there. Um, as I said, uh, we will be uh, uh, on next Thursday, February 12th, starting at 10 a.m., going all the way to 5 p.m. We have five sessions, one at 10, one at 11, one at 1, one at 2.30, and again at 4. So if you would like to participate that day, you can. We also have um, November 19th, uh, the following Thursday, uh, we will have five additional um, workshops at the same times. Um, in any of the workshops you may have missed, or if these wonderful presentations um, that everyone has prepared for the virtual vendor fair, they will be up on the website. So you can look on the website Keep looking on the website for updates uh, because we will be uh, cycling them over there after uh, the presentations. Um, so they will be up there so that you can get them. I think that is the uh, last. Oh, no, I have one other question. Um, the requirement asks for. Uh, ethnicity of MBWB listed firms. Why does the directory list ethnicity? So that's actually an enhancement that we are currently working on to add ethnicity to our MBE uh, WBE directory. I'm sorry, it would be in relation, of course, to the MBEs. Um, so I believe that is going to be um, rolled out in the near future. So um, I'm sure at that time there will be um, a DPS alert that goes out uh, providing information regarding that update, but that is something that's coming. Okay. All right. Uh, so I think um, all of the speakers, I thank the attendees for attending. I say to you, stay safe, stay well, um, social distance, wash your hands, wear your mask, and hopefully we will see you in 2021 for the virtual vendor fair live and in person. Um, so thank you so much. Thank you so much guest speakers and we will see everybody soon. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. Thank you ladies. Thank you.